Hi, welcome to Dr. Boyce and Norma Langa. I'm here with Norma Langa Mushali Moses from HealthyBlackWoman.com. How are you doing today, Norma? I'm doing great, Boyce. How are you? I'm doing really well. Uh, I see that you you turn your your audio down, which is good. I do the same thing. Um, you know, you and I were talking earlier about a, a woman in Georgia who uh, says that her son, uh, who was um, apparently eight years old, uh, in, but, she, but I could have sworn that they said he was a first grader. So I have to look that up. I didn't know you could be eight and in the first grade. I Maybe. thought he was seven. No, it, it, well, the story actually says that he's eight, and uh, we'll okay. talk about what grade he's in a little bit later. But they said that uh, his his mother, um, uh, Sadirdra, uh, says that her son, Deontay, uh, was attending an in-school suspension program when he was uh, slammed by a coach into the wall where he chipped his tooth. And uh, also, uh, he says that he was spanked, and his mother's very upset because she said she only gave the principal, uh, or the principal, the assistant principal, um, permission to uh, administer corporal punishment to her child, and I, I thought that was interesting because I mean, obviously, we know that a child, your child, shouldn't come home from school with a chipped tooth, uh, especially if it was given to him or her by um, by a teacher. Um, you know, but uh, she seems to be pretty upset. She says that the uh, incident wasn't properly investigated, uh, that the uh, administration is not taking it seriously, and she's deeply concerned. Um, now. Uh, I have my some of my thoughts about this issue, but I'm I'm curious to know what you think, um, based on what you've read uh, in this particular story. What are your thoughts, Norma? Okay, so a few things. Um, the first thing is that um, he was already in a, apparently a suspension program that takes place in the school, so you're suspended, but you still come to school. To school. Um, so already that says that the kid has been bothered somewhere else outside of the normal school population. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a little black boy. Um, and I, I think you already know I have high and a passion when it comes to little black boys and how they're treated in school. Um, so I'm already questioning should he even have been in the suspension program. That's the first. That's the second thing. Um, then the third thing is um, there should never be any reason for um, a kid to be beaten in school. If a kid's behavior is so outrageous that they can't contain him, the first thing that they should do is contact his parents. I don't know how they escalated from his alleged bad behavior to him being physically assaulted and his tooth being shipped. Um, And then the other point is that now they're saying that even though this happens, the school is trying to play it off like it's not so serious. Because she's saying that weeks have gone by um, and it seems like they're trying to brush the thing under the rug. Um, So I have lots of concerns. Um, nobody's going to convince me anytime soon that my kids who are being homeschooled should be put back into school. Okay, so uh, it, uh, just so people know, I want to apologize for some of the audio uh, challenges we're having. We, Noam was all the way in Botswana, and I guess sometimes uh, when we're going across the world, the, the connection isn't always perfect, but but you can see her in here, and I hope that you, you caught what she was saying. So what, what it sounds to me like what you were saying is that uh, there are a lot of questions you have that it seems the school really wasn't doing everything they're supposed to do in terms of how they're dealing with the child and uh, that you right. know, putting your hands on, on someone else's child is, is a problem. Uh, you should contact the parents, and I certainly agree with that. Um, I think that, um, you know, when I see this, and I, I, I don't just lean on how I feel uh, politically or socially or racially or culturally. I, I try to lean on instinct and common sense as well. And what I'm really seeing here is, um, obviously, obviously, you know, a child coming home with a chipped tooth, that's just a problem, right? Uh, especially if it, if it came at the hands of a teacher, uh, which you, you have to take your, your child's word for it in some cases, but you should certainly investigate because kids do say things, they make things up, they try to get people in trouble. And, um, and so, you know, my first thought is uh, I would just like to know the results of the investigation. I think that the fact that the school did not take it seriously uh, is, is a big problem if she feels that way, if she feels that it's been weeks and weeks and they haven't really talked to her or worked with her to find out what happened, that's a problem. Now, let's assume that you're in a school district where they do that, where they actually do try to find out what's going on and dig into it. Um, I think that's important because um, I've seen cases where kids will come home and just lie and say, oh, my teacher did this to me, my teacher called me, you know, the N-word or whatever. Um, uh, and, and, and then, you know, 
it's interesting. I, I don't know how to interpret the fact that he was already in an in-school suspension program. It could be because the school district is disciplining black boys in an unfair way, or it could be the fact that he's just a bad kid that he gets in trouble a lot. I I knew kids who got in trouble, uh, you know, and and um, you know, so I, I'm I'm I would like to know more about his track record you know have there been other incidents like this uh you know what sorts of uh not, not just his grades uh, you know uh because i i mean i know i was a kid i had bad grades when i was a kid i would but i can't say i was a, a bad kid I, I wasn't a bad kid but at the same time um i wasn't a good kid all the time either you know uh, i did sometimes i did deserve the grades that i got sometimes i did deserve to be put in, in suspension uh sometimes i i needed to be disciplined and 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 i always wonder uh i try i think with things like this you have to find a balance between empathizing with what parents are dealing with and what teachers are dealing with they're all dealing with a bad system they're all dealing with a racist system uh you have parents that want their kids to get a good education but the system doesn't allow it but then you have teachers who are maybe dealing with kids that are disruptive and don't know you know what to do uh you know because there are so many restrictions on how they can discipline the kids uh you know when i you know was in school i remember getting spanked by my teacher uh one time and i don't know if that's the best approach or the best punishment but i did deserve something uh, because i did screw up and now one thing i did not deserve which a lot of our kids don't deserve today is how you have so many kids being taken away in handcuffs and all this other craziness going on in school that that's crazy to me um, I think you're you're ruining a lot of children when you do that. Um, so uh, I think for me, my first thought when I see this is uh, the chip tooth is a concern. I just need to know what happened because you know if he really is a bad kid and he's using his mama because that's the thing I don't like either. I don't like when kids feel like they can use their mother as as an attack dog on a teacher uh, when the mother maybe believes anything the kid tells them. Like I'm gonna I, I literally heard this. I've literally seen kids say, I'm gonna go home and tell my mama and she's gonna come up in here and she's gonna get you. You know, no, your mama should not be your attack dog. That's just trifling, it's uh, irresponsible, it's immature, it's ridiculous. So um th th those are some of my thoughts on this. Uh what are your final thoughts on this, Noma? Well boys, first of all my philosophy is there really hardly are any bad kids. Um, there's just kids who are the product of ineffective parenting and ineffective teaching and disciplining in school systems um, because they just, you know, they're just a product of the environment. Um, and then let's also remember we're talking about a kid who's under 10. So to label him a bad kid and all these other stuff, I really don't think is fair. He's probably a product of his environment. Um, that's the first thing. Um, yeah, sometimes parents do t take on the defensive approach of you did this to my kid and I'm going to get you. And they totally ignore the fact that their parent may be ineffective. And the reason why their kid is being disruptive in school is because they're not adequately um, you know, using resources and tools to, um, you know, to produce good behavior out of their child, which I think every child has the potential to do. Um, that's the thing. But even aside with all those other things, I still think that there's no excuse for a kid to come home with a chipped tooth. Um, I think I'd burn the building down <laughs> if that was my kid. Um, you know, and I think most mothers feel that way. I think that we can accept that kids do um, sometimes demonstrate undesirable behavior, but that's to be expected from a child um, when they're at that age. Um, kids are supposed to test boundaries. They're supposed to do things to see what's going to happen and so forth. And I really have a problem with us leaving that as bad or bad behavior. They're supposed to do that. Um, one of my problems personally with most school systems is they ask children to sit down and be quiet and pay attention for more than adults can even do. And when I say more, I mean more time. Adults need to, you know, they, they get distracted, they go on Facebook, they take locks, they talk on the phone, they do all kinds of things. But we ask kids to sit down and be quiet and not move and not act up for extended periods of time. And we've removed sports, we've removed extracurricular activities from the schools. So I really don't, don't see how that can produce kids with excellent behavior. I, I don't understand how that's possible. So we have to be very mindful of calling kids bad or saying that they are bad because I think that they're just a product of the adults around them. Um, and I think if you're a teacher, again, I've never been an elementary school teacher and I have no desire to be one with the exception of my own kids. It's the skills, the tools, and the resources that you have to implement. Um, and if you're not skilled or you just don't have the heart for that kind of work, then you just shouldn't do it. 
Um, you shouldn't be assaulting kids and putting them in living rooms and calling it detention and suspension and all those other things, but actually they exhibit in normal behavior. They're supposed to cut, they're supposed to want to be active, they're supposed to run around. So I don't see anything here where any adult can excuse themselves in this situation, whether it's the mom or the teacher. I just don't. Mm. Well, you know, I don't, um, I, again, I, I don't think, I mean, I think the chip tooth kind of changes everything. I mean, the fact that he was injured, I, I think that's just uh, not, a, not, not good um, for the school district at all. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I would, I would say, I wouldn't say that they're bad kids, but I do believe that we're all products of something and there are bad people in the world. And I would say that children who are products of a bad environment do become technically bad children in the sense that, um, you know, if you put your child, your well-behaved child next to that child who does not come from a structured environment, uh, that unstructured child is going to disrupt your child. They're going to keep your child from being able to learn. They might harm your child by bullying him or beating, you know, or, or hurting him some other way, influencing him in a negative way. It's real. I mean, these the children are baby versions of adults. They are becoming something in this world. And we think it's cute when they're nine, but it's not so cute when they're 19 being hauled off to prison. So I think that, you know, it, you know, when it, when it, when it, you know, when it comes down to dealing with kids, I think that there are, uh, and this maybe this is the mother-father balance. I do believe mothers are good at nurturing and their mothers are good at discipline too in their own way but I also think fathers uh, are important in terms of um, uh, not feeling sorry for the child like oh the baby the baby cut his arm oh the, the poor baby I, I, I don't I don't do that as, as a father I protect but at the same time uh, especially if I'm talking about a little boy uh, it's like well you know what sometimes uh, son if you screw up and you act like an idiot you're gonna get hurt you're gonna get bad things are going to happen to you you have to learn to respond to authority in a certain way uh, because when you in seven years remember if you're eight nine years old it's six, six seven years you're going to be dealing with police and they will knock your face off if you speak back to the cop or whatever and, and i'm not saying that that's good i'm saying it's life it's real uh you know when you start playing sports if you're on a football team and you come in there with a, a horrible attitude an undisciplined unstructured attitude you're going to get your face knocked off you know that's the world of men right and and i I think that's why the father mother balance is very important because the mother on you know in many cases at least in my experience the mother's the one that is more likely to say oh come here you know let me nurture you and the father's like no get up and deal with the real world because that's what you're you're going to be faced with so once again though I, I i think we're both saying the same thing in the sense that we don't believe this child deserved to have a chipped tooth i think that there are more creative ways to discipline a child than than to just spank them every time they make you mad uh but i and i think more information is always called for in this so that's that's my two cents I think we, I think we agree. Um, we're coming from different angles, but I do think um, we, we, we do agree that um, you know there's a good chance that the kid, being a black kid, was treated differently. I don't know. Um, the story originates maybe in a in a school district which is more diverse, um, so maybe that's not necessarily what happened. But I still do think that there's a lot of questions, and um, they're going to need to be answered. Absolutely, kids should not be coming home with chipped teeth. We know that. Okay, well, um, I want to say thank you, Noma. It was great talking to you, as usual. Thank you. And everybody, thank you for watching us. Uh, this is Dr. Boyce and Noma Langa, and Noma Langa can be found at HealthyBlackWoman.com. And I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins, and I'm at Your Black World. Until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace. <laughs>